Meet Chinon Maria, this morning's artist in residence. Chinon is just one of a group of street artists, leaving their mark on one of New York City's most hallowed sites, as Faith Saley is about to show us. It's not uncommon to see that people in New York City have left their mark on the side of a building. I'm literally living out every graffiti artist's dream. Until you realize where that building is. I'm up there painting what I hold closest to myself here in the heart of New York City where New York's heart was broken. The World Trade Center is undergoing a transformation by way of street art. Dylan Bovez calls his mural Wild Things and dedicates it to his sister and mother who are fighting cancer. I have the Twin Towers right here. I was, I was in the fourth grade when, when it happened and my mother was supposed to be here at, that day. She called in sick and um, she didn't show up. And the next time she ever showed up to the World Trade Center grounds was to see my painting on the fence. And she got to come see it, and it was an emotional, it was an emotional thing. More than 20,000 square feet of corrugated metal. Every surface tells a story of mystery, acceptance, love. This story, painted by artists Chinon Maria and Sebastian Maitre, blooms audaciously in the shadow of the 9-11 memorial. You know, the, the flowers strike me not just as feminine, but also suggestive of new life and hope in an area that's had so much tragedy. You want to do something that honors the area, that brings hope, that right. brings life to a place that has gone through such tragedy. That is a key word, rebirth. Reviving this site, one can of spray paint at a time, even from 30 feet in the air. I love that this is your studio. <laughs> I know, isn't that crazy? <laughs> your atelier. It brings life, it brings zest, it brings activity. It brings a feeling of togetherness. It brings a feeling that, that hey, we're part of something that's wonderful. For developer Larry Silverstein, the images that bathe his buildings illustrate just how far he's come. You purchased the Twin Towers weeks before September 11th? Six weeks before September 11th. And how much further he has to go. The art project started when earlier this year the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey asked Silverstein to liven up his construction zone. You could have hired anyone. Why did you choose street art? Maybe because it was the coolest kind of art we could find. <laughs> and I'm saying this to you as an 87-year-old guy. <laughs> What is it, Larry? What's cool? It's this art. Look at it, enjoy it, take from it, and be blessed by it. Decades ago, businesses would never want someone spray painting their construction sites, right? That would be vandalism. And, and you're going out and buying the spray paint cans for these artists. And saying, y'all come. <laughs> the things that we previously were scared about, we now embrace for its beauty. Alejandro Velasco teaches an art and politics course at New York University. The question is, you know, how can we preserve the aesthetics without losing some of its politics? That's the real challenge of street art in the 21st century. Turns out graffiti goes way back. Velasco says that when Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés was plundering the Americas in the 1500s, graffiti offered expression to his otherwise silenced soldiers. They would paint messages on the walls of his palace, and he would write back on the wall. So this became a site where they would exchange opinions. And closer to our own time. Remember those pictures of New York in the 1960s? when impoverished artists quite literally used almost anything to make their mark. It's fascinating to realize that graffiti is sort of like an early version of social media. Hear me, I get to have a voice. Right. And it's social media, say artists Sticky Monger, Boogie, and Todd Gray, that's helping spread the popularity of this newest public palette. The picture that they take with it, they jump with it, the action, the motions that they give, it's everybody's artwork. We all made it together. Still, for all the joy their art brings, the artists say they haven't forgotten 
their canvas is hallowed ground. To have all these murals, there are like these metaphors of uh, wildflowers just, just kind of growing through the uh, rubble. And you think about the location and how it is our job to really focus in and create something to respect all the lives that were lost and um, to know that there is hope and there is a way for us to all unite together and that is through the art. Does art heal? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Art what? heals. In so many ways. <laughs> yes, it does. Mind, body, and soul.